Good afternoon, class. My name is Dr. Awe Emmanuel. I'm the facilitator for this course, ECN 215, which is the course title, The Principle of Finance. The Principle of Finance have the gaining ground in economics. Before, they said economics has no more to do with economic, with the finance, but that was wrong. Nowadays, we have seen the impact economics are not having on on finance, because economics are the financial consultants that will give a meaningful advice to any organization, because we use the skill of our forecasting ability to be able to advise the management on what and what to do with their finances, and also to be able to learn how to how to be able to invest their money appropriately. So that is why nowadays finance is gaining a great ground in economics. As I said, my name is Awe Emanuel, and I'm be the facilitator for the course, The Principle of Finance. Okay? So, um, the general overview of this course is that there are the six fundamental principles that can be used to study finance. Money, which money is very important. Money has a time value, because the time value of money the 10,000, I said 10,000 of yesterday, of last year, is different from 10,000 of today. So that is why the time value of money must always be considered when I try to evaluate any investment. It's very important to evaluate this so that we know that the time value of money differs at different points in time. So that's why it's very important. Then the diversification of uh, asset or investment is very important too. These are the basic principles of finance because when we diversify our investment, it will be able to help us to be able to cover up when a, a, an investment is having issues. Because uh, business itself is either we make profit or a loss. Loss is part of business. So the only thing is that we try as much as possible to be able to uh, diversify our, um, our business so that we be able to minimize the risk. Okay? The like general information is where we have them that's in the course tied to the course, I mean, the course, um, um, uh, the way they the way we grade 70% for the exam, 30% for the CA, they are just normal something. And this session one, we'll be looking at the basic concept of finance. So, what is finance? So, at the end of this course, we'll be able to, this study for today, this session, we'll be able to understand the rationale for study principle of finance. We'll also be able to know the functions of finance, the financial information, which is very important, then the financial planning as well as the financial decision. So at the end of this uh, session, we should be able to know and uh, understand <clears throat> all these basic concepts. Then what is finance? Finance has been defined by many scholars. Many scholars, they have different views but all the views are almost the same. So the generally, we say finance is defined as the provision of money, of fund or money, and management of fund to individual management or the government. Because it's not only the individual that needs fund, both the government, individual, as well as organization needs fund. So finance cut across all this, not just to acquire the fund, but to be able to manage it adequately. As you know that human want is unlimited, but the resources are limited. So as a result of that, when we have <clears throat> some adequate fund, some uh, kind of fund, we tend to look how we manage it adequately. It's very important. Not just to acquire it, we should be able to know how to manage it. Because if we don't manage it very well, it becomes a problem. So that is why this course is very important at this point in time. Firms are required to keep detailed financial record so that organized, organized reports can be distributed to managers, shareholders, as well as the government. So in this case, principle of finance focus on what these managers, investors, and government agencies do for this information. It is also to label as corporate finance or financial management. So the principle of finance is looking at how to manage all this. So that is why the principles itself formulated many principles. There are a lot of principles that guide this finance. The first one is money as a time value. Okay, what do we mean by that? The time period, that is the money, 
as I said, 10,000 of last year is not the same 10,000 of now because the re income, the re value has dropped. Okay, what 10,000 money? Many scholars define money as what money can buy. Okay, the reason is because money is not just the paper value, but the I mean, not just the facial value, but the real thing that money can buy. That is what money entails. So, in this case, now we are looking at the various time that money. The, vast, the value of money is not of today. It's not the same thing in the next ten years. So that is why economists we tend to consider various time value of money, so that we'll be able to be able to marry the money of today with that of ten thousand of ten years to come. So in that case, we have to look at. <clears throat> we must understand that the time value of money differs at the various point in time. That is the first principle we'll be looking at. The other one is the higher returns are expected to take more risk, no, more, uh, on more risk. Okay, the the when we, are, we want to take when we want to take a risk, because every business is a risk. No matter how sure it is, you just want you to invest your money on it. It's another thing for your money to come out. So risk is something uh, that is unavoidable for a business person. So that is why you have to take adequate measures to be able to reduce the risk as much as possible. So in that case, we look at that when you are taking the, the higher the risk, the higher the returns. So that is why you see that you sit back and not taking a risk and have very little return or you take a risk and have more returns. So that is left for a businessman. And when you're able to do your own work properly, you're able to uh, look at the investment critically, you'll be able to, you'll be confident in taking the risk because you cannot, as a business person, you cannot avoid risk. The risk is inevitable. So as a result of that, the only thing is that to look at it critically and tend to reduce your risk by, by looking critical at the business, by applying all principles of, of uh, finance so that I'll be able to be able to uh, take the best decision of a business and take the best business and be able to increase your returns. So that is what we are looking at in that aspect. Then the third one is diversification of investment. When you diversify your investment, it will help to be able to reduce your risk because there's no business, there are always fluctuations in business. At time you experience boom in the business, at time you will experience uh, a drop because, I mean drop. So in that, that case, what we mean is that there's no certainty that tomorrow you are going to have a boom business or or trough business. But in, what you simply do is to diversify your businesses. When you diversify your business, you have many business at different stages, so that you'll be able to when one is uh, when one is experiencing the other side, in the other side, the negative part of business, you'll be able to cover up with the other one that is experiencing the positive side of a business. So in that case, when we diversify our business, our investment, it will help to be able to reduce the risk. Another one is financial markets are efficient in pricing security. We need to also understand the financial market. The financial market plays a significant role in finance because they tend to regulate the activities of many uh, businesses under them. And last, next one is manager, a manager and stockholder objective may differ. The manager's decision, what decision did they make? Okay, what decision did they make? Okay, in this case, we're looking at the financial manager. What decision did they make? Their decision, the decision they make has a significant role in the success of a business. Oh, all this will be looking at that in, as time goes on. And lastly, reputation matters. The reputation of what, what we do Whatever we do, whatever thing we are looking at, our rep the reputation of the business is paramount. It's very important. So therefore, we tend to work towards achieving the reputation the business wants to be for itself because the goodwill is very important for any business because that is what we're going to strive and speak for the business tomorrow. So that is that with that. Then what are the functions of finance? We have various functions of finance. Okay, the first one we have planning and budgeting. A man that is planning to fail is planning to is, is planning to plan. He fail to plan is planning to fail. So in that case, we need to be able to 
uh, plan our businesses and see the various methods we use in achieving this so that we'll be able to have a better result. Because a businessman's objective is to be able to, not just to make profit, but to be able to maximize profit as much as possible. So in that case, we need to plan and also budget. We look at our revenue and look at our expenditure. Our expenditure must be, be in, uh, uh, we must be able to marry with our, exp- our, our, our income. So we don't spend what we don't have. So that is why we need to be able to make adequate plan concerning our income as well as our expenditure. Then also, also look at resource allocation. Resource allocation is, uh, you know, we have many, 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 human want is unlimited. We have many things to do. Okay, so that is why we need to be able to allocate our resources to a place, a point that will be able to give us many uh, huge returns. So when we are investing in our fund, we have to look at the business, various businesses, which of these businesses are going to give us much return. So that is why this course is very important because this course will help us to be able to analyze various investments and see which of these investment that will give us much return because the objective of every business owner is to be able to maximize profit. How do we maximize profit? How do we know that this particular business is going to give us more return? How do we know that that one is going to give us less return? So we have various techniques in this course that we're able to point out which of this business will give us more return. By the time we implement, by the time we are, uh, we are attached to all these uh, uh, techniques into it, I'm used to test the various businesses. We'll be able to know We'll be able to ascertain which of these businesses is going to give us more return. And that is one of the things we are looking at. We are going to be looking at in the course of this course. The other function of uh, finance is operating, monitoring, and safeguarding. Not just to establish the business, but to be able to monitor it. That's what's called evaluation. Okay? We need to monitor because business is like a baby. A baby needs pampering and molding so that be able to grow. When we start a business, when the business needs more attention. So the attention should be given. So therefore, we have to give a proper monitoring. It's the function of the business manager to be able to assign adequate personnel so that be able to monitor the progress of any business. And lastly, we also look at evaluating and reporting. That is also one of the function of a, of a finance manager. As a financial manager, we'll be able to evaluate and uh, evaluation. What do we mean by evaluation? That is by looking at reporting on what and what have gone on in, along the line. Because why do we do evaluation? We do evaluation so that we'll be able to uh, point out some of the challenges in the particular business, some of the progress or the success of a particular business. All these things will be is we'll be able to ex- increase our scope of knowledge of a particular business so that we'll be able to give recommendations. Of a particular of that particular business in the future, and, and besides, when we are embarking on the same similar project or similar business in the future, the proper one, the former one, we able to help us to be able to carry out all the obligations that we're going to encounter in that. So, what are the financial information? We'll be talking about financial information. Financial information, we are talking about the uh, the, the, the the profit and loss account. There are some information that we need. As a financial manager, a financial manager needs some information to carry out his own program. Because while we are looking at a business as a financial manager, we need to be able to know whether when the business is going down or when the business is progressing. Yes, as a financial manager. And how do we do that? We, need, we cannot do it on our own. We need some information to carry out those tasks. And those information is what is required. Financial information refers to the data of several monetary transactions that are done by individual or businesses. Okay? When they, in this case, now we are talking about the financial information, which has to do with the accountant, the work of accountant. When accountant, they are done with their work, those information is required to be able to perform our own responsibility. As a financial manager, we need to use those information like the profit and loss account, profit, trading profit and loss account, the balance sheet, the financial flow. We need those information to be able to carry out our own activities, to be able to know the strengths and weaknesses of any business. So that is it. So this information are very important to us so that so we'll be able to perform our own duties, to know the strength or weakness of any business. Who are the users of financial statement or information? There are many users, okay? Because as a business person, before I invest my money on a business, I want to know about the business. I want to know their information system, all this, their, I mean, their financial information. I'm really interested to know because not as a, not just 
as, but I'm talking as, as an investor. I want to buy shares in a particular business. I would like to know their financial information. I want to know whether it's worth investing my money on or not. So these are the users of financial information. Number one, the lenders. Before you, somebody will give money to a business, you want to know how they are faring. Okay, because nobody wants to identify with a failure. Everybody wants to identify with success. Yes, if Dangote Cement wants to sell a shares today, I will be interested in buying. Why? Because I know Dangote Cement Company, they are doing well. So everybody wants to be identified with success. So that is why the lenders, they are interested in knowing about the state, uh, financial statement of any business. Then the second one is the shareholders, investors. The shareholders or investors, that is the same way. If somebody wants to uh, buy shares in a company, as you want to be part owner of a company, this next thing is you want to be, you are interested in, is curious to know about their financial statement, to know whether they be achieving success in the past or not. If they be failing in the past, you'll be scared to invest this money in that kind of business. So that is why he needs the financial information to be able to know, take decision whether he should go ahead and be part of owner of the business or not. Another one is the management. The management need the financial information to be able to have adequate planning. They need it to plan. They have to plan on how and how to generate more funds. They need to plan on their expenditure. So they need the financial, they need to know their financial statement to know what, whether they should spend more next year or they should spend less based on their current situation of their financial statement. Then the suppliers as well. Suppliers too need financial information because they need to know who they are dealing with. Okay, at times, it's not every time they pay on, they, they pay on cash. Okay, so they need to know whether these people that are worth giving on credit or not. So that because at times when you supply, you get your money at the future date. Okay, so if it's a business that have good reputation, it's a business that have that have financial uh, muscle. So the the supplier will be will be relaxed. It will be will have that confidence in giving them the supply uh, is good or is uh, his product to the. Uh, to the to the company, so that's why the supplier also need financial information. Then the tax department as well, they also need financial information so they're able to calculate their taxes, okay? Because there are taxes they pay to the government, so they need this to be able to pay to calculate their taxes. The customers as well. Someone will ask me that, how what concern the customer with the company? The customer too needs financial information because they are dealing with this company every day. They buy their products. They know that they have reputation. They have goodwill. So as a result of that, it will even make the customer to have more confidence and say, yeah, yes, I can be confident that I want to consume this particular uh, product. Then the employees, the employees need financial information too as well, because so that you know the firm you are dealing with, the firm you are working with, okay? You know, so that you're able to know that, yes, because everybody wants to identify with success. When the company is succeeding, you say, yes, I'm part of the company. It's a plus. But when the company is free, you will not even be able to go to the public and tell them you're part of the company. Yes, you see somebody say, yes, I'm working in social player, I'm working in University of Abuja. Why? Because University of Abuja is a, is a success. So that is, in that case, you'll be bold that. So be, why are we saying that? Because we know the financial information of that particular company is growing. So that is why the employees too needs to know the uh, financial information and the general public. In fact, according to Section 334 of, the st of state, it says every accounting year, the financial statement of every company must be published. Okay, so in that case, the financial statement of every company must be published. Is every corporate company must be published? So in this reason, the public also need financial information so that somebody will be able to take decision and say, okay, I want to buy shares in that this particular company. By while looking at their financial statement, you can be stimulated to buy shares or to be part owner of that particular company. So these are the users of financial information. Then we have three key financial statements. Okay, the financial information we are talking about have to do with the financial statement. Then the first one is the balance sheet. When we are talking of the balance sheet, we are looking at the asset, the liability, as well as the equity of a firm. Okay, so the balance sheet, the asset of the company you have to do is split it into two. We have the fixed asset and the as well as the current asset. The fixed asset have to do with the uh, the company's um, uh, um, vehicles, the uh, the company's vehicles, equipment, all those uh, things that are fixed in nature, even the building of the company, those are the fixed assets. And we have the current asset. The current asset has to do with stock, the uh, cash at hand and cash at band. Those things that can easily be converted to cash, those are the current 
asset. Then we have the liability. The liability are what is company is taking money away from the company. Asset brings money. Why liability takes money away from the company? Especially example of the liability is the loan. When a company takes loan, they service those loan time to time. So the loan taken by the, from the by the company is what the company has to be servicing it. So it takes money away from the company. Those are the liability of the firm and the equity. That is the owner's capital. The capital contributed by the owner for the upgrade or for the establishment of the firm. So all these are the uh, the the balance sheet. This are uh, these statements are revealed in the balance sheet of of a, of a company's financial statement. But the good thing is that the the, 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 the good thing that the financial manager must watch out is that the lab asset must not be. I mean, the asset must be more than the liability. What brings money must be more than what takes money away from the firm. If they are take, if more money is going out too much, and money is not coming in, it's a problem. So what brings money should be more than what takes money away from the firm. So this is what revealed in the balance sheet. And the second one is income statement. The income statement reveals the revenue, expenses, and profit and loss in the business. So the revenue, that is the money we make, the income, that's the profit we make for the particular accounting year. The expenses have to do with the expenditures for that particular year. And the loss and profit, the difference between revenue and expenses is what is termed as the profit or loss in the business. So this is also revealed in the financial statement. And the last one, which is the statement of cash flow, the operating, investing, and financing. The, the financial manager have great decisions to take in this aspect. So they'll be able to know when and when the which, uh, which proportion of this should be invested in any business. So these are the three key financial statements of any business. That's just a, that makes all the financial information that is required to do our own task as a financial manager so that we're able to have the progress to get the weakness or strength of any business. Okay, the financial planning. What is financial planning? We are talking, we said planning is very important. So the way we plan our life, plan every, every aspect of our life, we also plan in terms of finance. If we don't plan finance, because what we make, we have to marry it with our expenditure. It's very important. Because when we don't plan, we spend anyhow, it's a problem, real problem. When I was in secondary school, when I entered secondary school, I discovered that my mom has a very mini shop. And I discovered that she only sells, she does not keep record of what she sells. She just mind, mis mind, take the, as she was selling, she was taking the money. Then when I entered secondary school, the little knowledge of accounting I had, I pick an exercise book and enter what she said. And I was able to manage a fund with the little knowledge I had then. But to my own surprise, anytime she wants to take money then, then I always stop her that this is a business money. We need to separate our life from our business. Okay, so I, I help her to separate her life from her business with the little knowledge I had then. And I realized that even when I went back to school, my mother continued in that uh, trend. She was entering everything she, she sold and she was able to manage her expenses and she was able to declare her profit. So this means that with this little knowledge I had then, it means that planning on our expenses or our business is very, very important. So financial planning is very, very crucial. And uh, we'll be looking at the various aspects of planning. The first one is class, cash flow management. Cash flow management, the in and out of business for a firm is very important. So we must not allow cash to be, we must not allow shortage to happen in a business because when there's shortage, we'll, be able to, we'll not be able to manage the day-to-day -day activities of a business, which is very important. Then another one is investment management. Where do we, what do we invest on? How do we invest? Okay, what kind of business do we invest our money on? So that's why we need to know the basic concept, the basic principles that guides investment. So in the course of this course, we'll be introducing us to some techniques that will help us to be able to know where and where, what kind of business do we invest on, which one brings more return. So that's why we'll be able to do that in the manager of this course, so that be able, the investor will be able to invest their money on something that will bring more return, because they're interested in what will bring more returns than what will stagnate their money. Okay, then the retirement planning. Retirement planning, too, we need to plan on our future. It's very important. It's part of planning. We have to plan our final. How much do you earn? How much do you supposed to be spending every month? How much do you save? So our saving, if, we, if you consume more now, that means you spend less in the future. And if you spend less now, you consume more in the future. So you have to spread our income over our lifetime. It's also part of the uh, financial 
planning, the education planning, do we save money for our children's education is very important. We need to be saving so that we are able to plan for the future, our children's education. So it's one of the things there. Tax planning. How much do we pay from the government? Thank God we, 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 most of the tax we pay is that indirect tax. But even we still pay direct tax in Nigeria because it is direct from the source. Okay? And even businesses, they pay tax direct to the government. So we have to make all this plan so that we are able to have... Uh, the, another one is estate planning. The, then where do we have our home? We have to build our own home too. So it's very important we make that plan, then the risk management. How do we risk? How do we manage our risk? By diversifying the, our investment. Diversify our space so that we're able to manage our risk, so that we're able to have a better way to manage our investment. So these are the various planning on uh, this thing. But how do we plan? That's the least of takes sort of planning process. Then the planning process, we have various ways of planning. Okay? The first one is discovery session. That is when we conceive an idea. Okay? We conceive an idea. That's when we take a personal this thing and conceive an idea. When we think of what we do, okay, this is what we want to do. Okay? This is what we tend, tend to do. Then the second stage is to gather information. Yes, we go to the field and get to understand what we, that idea. Because it's not yet a business yet, it's just a thinking. We are thinking. Then when the next thing is to go to the field and gather information, do your feasibility studies. Then start to study the area, ask questions from people in the street. Okay? You'll be able to gather adequate information. Okay? The next one is to analyze the information. You come back and study this, this information you gather. And the next one is present recommendations. Okay? And next one is implement the plan. Now, when you, when you conceive an idea and you go to the feed, that feed you went to, it will help you to be able to know more about the business or the things you are planning to do. When you come back and try to analyze the information, you'll be able to take a decision whether you should move ahead with the business or should back out. Okay? Why are you doing that? Because you, there are, when, you were, when you were in the feed, there are some things you encountered. Then you may to know how much it's going to cost for that particular investment. Then you know the problems. In fact, it's not even good to start any business without knowing the problem of the business. Yes, you have to know the problem. You'll be able to discover the problems of that business. Then you'll be able to ask yourself a question that, how do you manage these problems? How do you manage the problem? Is it a problem you can solve or a problem you cannot? If you cannot solve the problem, it's better you back out from that investment. We don't invest some money in that business. But if it's a problem you can solve, then you go ahead. So that's why at that stage three, a critical decision must be taken. It's very important. Because and the decision you are going to be taking is a function of what you come up from the from the feed. Okay? So that's why you take a critical decision, all this information, the source, the source of the fund, the fund you are going to need for that investment. How do you source for that fund? Do you have the fund? If yes, fine. If no, how do you source for the fund? Yes, if you are going to take a loan, do you have the collateral? Do you have the requirement? Those are the questions that you need to ask yourself at that point in time. So at the end of the day, if you are to move on, then you go to the next step by looking at how to get the recommendations for the business and the implementation of the plans. That is by when you do a proper uh, implementation. Not just to, when you are implementing the business, you don't just sit down and start implementing it. You have to do the monitoring and evaluation. It's very important. And lastly, periodic review. You have to check, be checking in time to time. Periodic so that you'll be able to know the stage we are now and the next stage, what will happen the next day. So all these are the process of planning. Okay? So these are the process of planning. Then the next one is look at the financial decision. What decision? We have three basic decisions in finance. First one is investment decision. That is whether to invest in a short term or a long term. And investing in a short term or a long term is a function of the kind of more fund you are using. What kind of money you are using, whether it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a money you can tie down for a long term or a money you cannot tie, you can tie down for a short time. And you remember, when you are investing in a long term, it attracts huge return, higher return compared to a short term business. So that is the first one, investment decision. The second one is financial decision. The financial decision has to do with that debt or equity. The debt or equity, should we have more of debt to finance a business or have more of equity? Equity is the owner's capital. The capital contributed by the owner is known as the equity. So, but a good firm or a, 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 a strength that have great strength, a firm that has great strength, should not 
use more of debt to finance a business compared to equity. I'm not saying that you should not use debt, but use less of debt and more of equity. In fact, the ratio, uh, the, the most company, most uh, uh, the uh, financial uh, this thing, they recommended that that the a business should be able to have at least sixty percent of more of equity compared to debt. So this is the decision of financial decision in that aspect. And the last one is dividend decision. The dividend decision is whether to be able to distribute this to the shareholders or to retain the dividend to use to expand the business. So that's the that decision they make in that aspect. But but in taking this decision, they have to be very careful because when you look at uh, when you look at the uh, the the firm, you discover that the, every every firm or every organization they want to be able to satisfy their customers, and in satisfy their customers, they need to be able to be able to separate their whether to share their to sh uh, to, to share their uh, their profit or to be able to or to to use to retain it to expand the business. So in doing that, they have to be sure, they have to be clear between retaining the dividend or to share it to the shareholder. They want to satisfy their customer, of course, but at that point, they have to take that critical decision. It's a critical decision because every shareholder wants dividend. Dividend is the share, the money, the profit you share to the shareholders at the end of the accounting year. So whether to retain it and use to expand the business, or to share to the shareholder. Why do we retain dividend? So that be able to, instead of taking loan and acquire more interest, we use this to be able to expand the business. That's the one of why we do that. And in summary, we've seen it that we have been able to explain the concept of finance and the principles as well as the function of finance. We have also been able to establish the financial information, financial planning, as well as the financial decision. This decision will be taken. So we'll be, this is just an introduction. We'll be doing a lot so we we'll see how and when do we invest our fund. And what and why. When, when do we invest our fund? At what capacity do we invest our fund? What kind of project do we invest our fund on? All these things will be revealed to us by the time we start this course. So that we'll be able to use various techniques. Various techniques will point us to the right direction of which we should invest our fund on. And the next session will be focusing on various sources of finance. We have various sources of finance. And this year, we are very, we'll be, we be looking at different sources and which are which and which should be recommended for a particular business. Because it's advisable when we are dealing with a risky business, we should be able to use, we should use an equity finance. We should not use more of that because it's a risky business. So the kind of business we do should determine the kind of source uh, of source of fund we should look for. So in the next session, we'll be able to look at that, the various sources of finance before we move on to the next stage. Thank you.